Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of The Jester Room. I'm your host, Crepency. Welcome in. What's going on? Episode 2. And we're going to jump right into it. Um, the title of this episode I thought was fitting for a multitude of reasons. Um, one, because of some of the subject matter I'm going to talk about on the podcast today. And two, because... You know, the, the idea, the whole idea of um, what now, you know, like I got that first episode out of the way, which was a, kind of a daunting thing. I want to touch on that for a second. Like, you know, I'm uh, for those of you who don't know, like I come from live streaming. So that was, you know, I, I still live stream. I'm a live streamer on Twitch and I, I do content creation el elsewhere as well. But um, primarily, I'm a Twitch streamer and there is a huge difference between live streaming and doing something like this and to me this is much more daunting because at least with live streaming if there's lulls in in me talking or there's little like gaps and stuff the gameplay at least picks up the slack for some of that whereas this it's all on me to be talking and carrying the conversation you know and and if you don't have a guest or someone to bounce off of it's all you you know which which is like a good and a bad thing. I would love to have guests on here eventually, but I wanted to kind of do a couple episodes on my own first and kind of figure out where I wanted to take this and, uh, and stuff like that before I started bringing people on here. Also, uh, if you're in my community and you have any suggestions for like guests within our kind of Twitch circle that you want me to bring on, let me know in the comments. If you have suggestions for anything with the podcast, things you want me to talk about, uh, you know, guests that are like realistic that I could potentially get to come on here and talk with me for an hour, anything along those lines, please let me know because this is a two way street. Like, I want you guys to help shape the future of what this podcast is. So please, please, please give me your suggestions. But, um, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with serious or do we want to start with fun? I guess we'll start with some of the like more lighthearted, goofy stuff. I mean, not lighthearted. That, that's kind of that's kind of a bad way to, to word it. But we'll start with some of that shit, and then we'll get into the kind of more, uh, more serious, like, mental health, addiction uh, stuff that I want to get into. Um, first, for starters, uh, and I have no opinion on this one way or the other, but I've just been seeing it blow up my Twitter feed, so I have to talk about it with you guys. Now, I'll try to find a uh, video of it as well, but for those of y'all who don't know, Adriana Chechik, who... Apparently, according to all of these, uh, all of these, um, news articles, is a Twitch streamer. I mean, I guess she's a Twitch streamer as well, but we all know Adriana Chechik. At least people in my age range know her as being an adult film star. That's what she originally came from, you know? But, so, they were having a little, um, fight over those, you know those foam pits were like, you can see a picture of it right here. Those foam pits where two people stand on two separate platforms and then they have like these giant, they look like giant Q-tips, but they're like real spongy and foamy at the end. And then they try to hit each other off into a foam pit. Now, apparently this foam pit wasn't up to par. Um, it, just looking at it in a, in a picture or video, you can't really tell how deep it is. I mean, it could be one foot deep or fucking 20, you know? But, like, usually foam pits are a good, like, they, they go up over your head. They're, like, six, eight, ten feet deep. This one looks like it's about, like, it goes up to, like, their knees. So not very deep. Definitely not up to standard. But I'll play the video and um, kind of give my thoughts on it really quick. Oh, my gosh. Big sense of, sense of her own. And now she, like, can't get out. Right. Just watching yeah, that like looks rough. So as you can see, she fucking jumped off in celebration, you know, after winning and slapped her tailbone hard. Now, I don't have a ton of, of, of thoughts on like I, if I really want to delve into to TwitchCon, and maybe I will later when I kind of talk about some of the fuckery on Twitch that doesn't get talked about. But uh, 
obviously whoever did that like uh now apparently from what i've from, from the little bit of like research and watching i've done it wasn't twitch uh was not responsible for building that foam pit it was a third party like company that they hired to to do that so not that that takes away any any uh accountability from twitch at all but you know whoever built that and whatever company was um responsible for the foam pit definitely definitely was not up to scratch to say the least so obviously you know it i I have no judgment on Adriana Chechik one way or the other as a human being. I think she's a beautiful girl. I think she's made a ton of money doing porn. Good for her. I think it's awesome that she's been able to to uh, parlay that into a career on Twitch. And, you know, people, uh, like, some of the se- uh, sentiment I'm seeing on, on Twitter is, like, people blaming her. Like, oh, she shouldn't have uh, cannonballed into the foam pit. And it's like, it's a foam pit. The whole purpose of a foam pit is to break your fall. Like, what? Like, so I, I hate that that argument. Yeah, maybe she could have been more careful with it, but the foam pit was, the, the bottom line, <laughs> to, to put a bow on it, is the foam pit itself was not up to scratch. You know, I, I'm surprised, to be totally honest, that she was the only one who got hurt because I, I could easily see a bunch of other people having gotten hurt just landing wrong because it's not that deep you know like the foam pit was not that deep so yeah anyway twitchcon um you know just just to talk about twitchcon for a second since i i I brought that up i originally had thought about maybe going to twitchcon now i have zero experience with twitchcon uh in person i've never been to a twitchcon i've been streaming on twitch since October of 2020. It is, today is Monday, October 10th, 2022. So, a little over two years. I've had thoughts of going to TwitchCon. I've, uh, you know, I've kind of played around with the idea, but I've never been. Um, it seems like an interesting event. I like the idea of being able to to meet at a convention with a bunch of other streamers who share this common interest. But, uh, apparently, just from what I read on Twitter, and again, this is all anecdotal. I don't want to speak any of this as if I, I'm preaching fact or I even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Just assume 99% of the time that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But, I see a lot of this stuff that, it, it just apparently there's a lot of like, shady stuff that goes that goes on at these conventions with like with like some of the bigger streamers trying to like groom some of these younger fans and like fucking people trying to hook up with these like young impressionable people and it's like there's a lot of like that that's the shit that's like a little eh. like if, if people just went there and to meet their favorite streamers and have a weekend gaming and and you know having fun and like sharing their love for this common interest then that would be cool but it seems that there's a always every year there's like these shady undertones which i don't think is by coincidence i think has a lot to do with the type of fucking people that do stream and i you know uh, there's this whole dark seedy underside on twitch that people don't talk about and it's, yeah, it, it's kind of crazy to me. And I think a lot of it has to do with the type of people who stream on Twitch. And then this even is coming from somebody who themselves streams on Twitch. But over the two years, I've ran to a lot of people that are in my age group that are very, like, delusional. They, it seems like there's a lot of immaturity on Twitch. But not just immaturity, like, like not just, like, regular immaturity where you're like, oh, that person's immature, you know? like. Almost like these people, (sighs) the way it seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but I've met a lot of people on Twitch that are in their like mid to late 20s, maybe even pushing like their 30s, who act like children, to be be completely blunt and blatant. And I don't know if that's by virtue of the fact that, you know, they just never grew up or never had to go through certain... Like, they never had to go through any, like, real shit. But it, it, it does bother me that there's 
so much like uh, I, I I don't even know what the word is. It's a lot of this very the the one word that comes to mind when I think of that like dark seedy side of Twitch. There's one word that always comes back to my mind, and then I'll move on from this Twitch and Twitch con subject because I actually have some more important shit that I want to talk about. But that word is fake. It seems that there is a lot of, and I, I've talked about this on stream numerous times, but I'll kind of reiterate for you guys. Uh, these are conversations I've had with multiple different streamers, and I've had tons of different people agree with me. And I mean, not that that even matters, but we all kind of agree that there's a lot of this, you know, on Twitch, especially in the beginning when, you know, say in your first six months of streaming, I think people end up taking a lot of shit and maybe having people in their streams that they wouldn't or like, you know, there, there's a lot of ass kissing because you're trying so hard to make it that you don't want to offend anybody. You don't want to chase away a potential viewer. So maybe you'll you'll let people say certain things in your chat that you wouldn't let fly usually or, you, you know, um, just that fake networking aspect, you know? And there's a way, like, there's a way to do it in a real and honest way, but it seems that a lot of these, you know, mid-20 to early 30s people, like, that just have this idea of how to grow and network on Twitch and they end up becoming, like, caricatures. I look at these people and I'm like, I'm like, that can't be a real person. Like, because they, it just, again, fake. That is like, if, if I could take, if I could take a brand and just stamp it on their foreheads that said fake, I would, because that's what I see when, when I see these, these people who are trying so hard to make it on Twitch, so hard to like find, a, like whatever it is they're trying to find, you know? And then there's a whole nother side of Twitch that, you know, I, that I love that like Twitch has, has given me a social like circle and it's, and it's afforded me, you know, so many things. And I've met so many great friends and real down to earth, genuine people through it. So, you know, I guess you have to take the good with the bad. It's like anything, there's going to be your awful people and there's going to be your good people. But yeah, I would love to go to TwitchCon eventually. Hopefully by the time I go. They got their shit together much better. But who knows, you know, the way that Twitch is going, it, it may be that in a few more years, another uh, platform, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or another new platform that doesn't even exist yet, may be the next thing. It's just that Twitch kind of has the quote unquote like monopoly on live streaming right now. So for that reason, it is like the place to be. So yeah, I could go on for ages about Twitch and TwitchCon, but we'll, uh, We'll move on to the next thing I wanted to want to talk about. Now, getting back to like what I said, the title of the podcast, what now? Um, I'm just going to say this because if I don't just say it, it's going to like be hard for me to. And then I'm going to I'm going to really dive deep here. So well, today is Monday, October the 10th. Two nights ago, Saturday night, I relapsed. And it's hard for me to even say that or share that. People who know about me know that I struggle openly. I struggle with addiction. I have been clean for the better part of two years. I've had a couple m minor slip-ups. And one of those happened two nights ago. And uh, I just want to preface this with this. Relapsing... You know, they, they have that whole old adage that relapse is a part of recovery. And, you know, it is. Like, I, I, I think people have a skewed view of what relapse is, especially people who have no, um, no experience, whether firsthand or secondhand, uh, with addiction. But let me just give you my in-depth thoughts about why I relapse and how I got there and then what I'm doing going forward because I think it's an important thing to talk about and if if me sharing my mental health and addiction struggles helps any other person then it's well worth sharing in my opinion 
But uh, relapses for me, at least at this point, you know, in the beginning, um, just to say, because I, I really don't care to share this, my drug of choice always, since the time I was like 12 or 13 up until when I was 25 and I got clean, uh, has been opiates. Whether that's pills, whether that's heroin, whether that's fentanyl, opiates and downers were always my drug of choice. And, um, you know, once you have a certain amount of time clean, once you get far enough removed from it that you don't go through physical withdrawals anymore, because usually in the beginning, that is what's causing people to relapse for the most part, is the physical aspect. Um, you know, you're going through those physical withdrawals. You're, and to describe it to people who don't know what uh, physical withdrawals from opiates are like, imagine the worst flu you've had times a thousand your bones hurt, your muscles hurt, you're sweating, sneezing, puking, diarrhea, your insides just feel like they want to come out. Like it's just your skin is crawling. Like it, it, it's the worst feeling physically that I could ever explain. Like I would never wish it on anyone. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. So that is usually what causes people to relapse in the beginning. Is that because they just want to feel okay? They don't want to feel sick, so they go back to the drug, and you know it it remedies that. And once you get far enough removed from it, and you don't actually have those withdrawals, um, I think for a lot of people, at least I'm gonna speak for myself, it's the mental, it's that mental aspect that that I have to fight every day that 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 draws me back in because not only. Am I suffering with addiction, but anxiety and depression on top of that, it, it makes for a deadly combo. But my relapses usually happen like this. It's not, people think that it's like simple, like, oh, just don't, just don't use drugs or just choose not to. But um, for me personally, it's usually a long drawn out process where you know, these past few weeks, I've been, I've been very like, um, I've, down. I mean, for lack of a better word, I've isolated a lot. I notice that, you know, whenever uh, I'm, I get into that mindset, I isolate. I I feel very anxious, depressed. I feel very ostracized. I feel like, like. No one understands me. Nothing anyone can say or do can help me out of this situation I'm in. I, I get to the point where after, it, whether it's after days of feeling this way, weeks of feeling this way, months of feeling this way, I hit a point where it feels like the only thing that's going to make things better is to get high. And it's an awful way to think. And there's different things you can do to combat it. You know, it's, you have to have a social circle and keep yourself busy and have things to do because eventually you know you're never far enough removed that your brain completely forgets you know it's like you can have a year clean two years clean three years four five ten but you know at least for me obviously the longer i have removed from it the easier it gets but my brain always knows that if i'm dealing with something that i feel like i can't deal with there's something that I could run to that will make everything disappear and everything be okay, you know? So honestly, I wanted to talk about it just to kind of tell on myself and get it out there because if I don't, that shit will fester, you know? And I haven't gotten high since then. I don't plan on getting high again, you know? But these things, I think, you know, it, it happens. Like people relapse. Recovery isn't black or white. It's not abstinent or, or not abstinent, you know, there's a huge spectrum. And I just wanted to share that just to say that, like, if you're someone out there who's going through um, addiction or, or mental health struggles, you're not alone. And, and don't let one fuck up end your life, you know, like, because before I would relapse and if I relapse, that would be it. Like, I would say, fuck it. I already relapsed. Like, now I'm getting high every day. And then before I know it, I'd be strung out for six months, you know? But I know now that me slipping up one time doesn't have to be me slipping up forever, you know? Like, and that's a hard thing to do, you know? Especially once you open that Pandora's box. Like, 
once you know that feeling again, it's really hard to to just shut that again. And the things I do to to try to 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 try to keep away from that are keep busy. I have to surround myself with good people. If I isolate or I'm left to my own devices and my own thoughts, I will always, always, always ruin my fucking life because I don't know what I'm doing. So I try to surround myself with good people. I try to keep busy. I try to keep motivated. I try to keep a routine. A routine's a big one for me because um, it's that whole old adage that like idle hands are the devil's play things. If I'm not keeping busy and I'm not working on something or working on myself or whatever it is, I, I slip. I slip back into old habits. And it's because for, for so long you get accustomed to a certain way of living. Like, you know, for me, I was using drugs for such a long time that you get so accustomed to, to the insanity of it. Like, to, to someone up from the outside looking in, doing heroin every day sounds insane. And, like, living like that sounds insane. And it is. But when you're in it, when you're smack dab in the middle of it, it doesn't feel that way. It just becomes normal. You know, it just becomes normal. So like you're trying to rewire your brain into a new normal, you know, and it's, it's fucking hard. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. It's one of the hardest things any individual have to do. And, and I think all addicts and people struggling with mental health, because I believe they're kind of one in the same, um, I think all of them deserve a fucking pat on the back and like just just to know that they're not alone and like cuz it seems, you know, kind of kind of uh to piggyback this into a, a bigger topic like it seems to me that I'm not the only one, you know. I mean, I know this for a fact, obviously, right? But I know I'm not the only one going through this kind of shit. Um especially like with the opiate epidemic, guys, like I don't know how it is in other uh, states. You know, I've been to a handful of places. And, and when I was younger and like and I was first getting into opiates, I thought it was strictly like an East Coast thing. But as I'm getting older and as I see this happen more and more, like it's an epidemic that's affecting our entire country right now. And you have to think that there's a reason that all of these people are running to these drugs to, to help them cope with everyday life. And is it? Is it social media, like, affecting all of our self-esteems? Is it just the world we live in now? I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I had somebody to bounce off of right now because I don't know. I wish I had the answer to that. But it, but it seems to me that now more than ever, um, that drug use, addiction, the whole opiate epidemic, mental health issues, Mental health, especially, like, I, I love that mental health up among men is getting talked about more, but just mental health in general, men and women, it's like all these things are at an all-time high. Or at least it seems that way. If it isn't that way, it sure seems that all of these things are at an all-time high. And I just wonder why that is. Like, why now more than ever? And maybe that's something I'll have to dive deeper in on another on another podcast, I may be able to do some research, but if anyone has any input on that, put it down in the comments because, because I would love to know, like, what is it that is, what malady is it that's affecting all of us that, that we all feel this way? Because, you know, streaming on Twitch, I talk to people from all over the world and whether they're, it, it doesn't just have to be people who are addicted. Like, it seems like everybody, whether it's, you know, it, Everybody just like feels not okay. I hear it time and time again. Like you ask people how they're doing. I'm I'm managing. I'm getting through. I'm you know I'm fine. Like I just see so much struggle and so much hurt and so much pain and and that's another reason I cho chose to do this. Like if I can share my struggle and it can help people, why wouldn't I want to do that? You know. But. Yeah. And uh Yeah, the the title of the podcast, What Now? I think we could talk about there's two there's two different questions that I want to answer. What now for me going forward, like now that I've relapsed and 
I've been struggling really bad lately. And then the second what now is what now for this podcast going forward. So I'll answer the first one first. For me going forward, what now? You know, like I relapsed a couple days ago. Um, I got my birthday is the day after tomorrow. Uh, I've been struggling heavily lately. I've felt just depressed, anxious all the time. Not okay. Like I'm unhappy with the life I'm, I'm living. I have a few people in my circle, but nowhere near enough. And what now for me, you know? And I guess going forward, I just want to, I just want to be happy and try to do better. Just try to make small improvements because for me, I feel like all the time I have, I have um, these grand ideas of what I want to do, but they're always large scale goals that I can't accomplish overnight. And I need to break them down into smaller goals because my goals would be like, I want to move out on my own. I want to get a job. I want to fucking be happy. I want to stay clean. I want to save up money and do this and do that. And it's like, they're all these long-term, like big goals that don't happen overnight. And I think I need to break them down into smaller, more manageable goals that will then build up into me getting to those long-term goals eventually. Does that make sense? Like just start small with like, all right, every day I'm going to put in a couple job applications and I'm going to do laundry and like, Because some days just getting up out of bed is enough. Like, because there's days where I just want to lay in bed all day and hate myself. Like, I, like, I don't know if anyone else can relate to that, but when my depression is at its worst, like, I don't want to be around anyone. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to see anybody, talk to anybody. I don't even want to be alive, you know? So I'll just lay in bed and just be miserable. And I'm getting like emotional (laughs) talking about it because. That shit is hard. When you're at the depths of that depression, that shit is hard. It's, it's like, it's like just having this massive weight just crushing you. And even these little, like everyday things become so much harder to do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not easy. (sighs) All right. Sorry if you noticed a little pause real quick. I just uh, paused to uh, use the bathroom and. And smoke really quick. So, um, the next question being, what now for the future of this podcast? And, you know, that's a, that's a funny question. Um, the name, The Jester Room, came from the idea of... It, it was the name of a channel in my Discord server where we would chill when we were on stream and just talk. And the whole idea of the podcast was born out of the idea that me and a few friends would be playing video games, usually like Fall Guys, because it's a game you don't have to super focus on. And we would be playing them and maybe smoking, maybe drinking a little bit, whatever we're doing. And we would have the goofiest, funniest conversations about the most nonsensical stuff. One night we could be talking about OnlyFans and Amaranth and freaking, you know, whatever. And then the next night we'll maybe be talking about something super serious like, you know, uh, maybe someone in the group is going through something and, and they like open up about it. And then that night we're talking about something, you know, super serious, like the death of a loved one or, or something like that. And the idea for, for this podcast was born out of that idea of like just wanting a place to, to talk openly about whatever I want to talk about. And that's why some weeks... It's going to be more funny and lighthearted gaming stuff. Some weeks it'll be more serious. I am realizing though that the things that I'm most knowledgeable about are like the mental health and addiction stuff. And if I talk about that every single week, I feel like it's going to get stale and like too heavy. So I, I want to mix the heaviness of being able to talk about serious topics like that but with the levity of being able to make jokes and have fun like like bro like there's a lot of absurd shit to talk about like just absurd shit going on in the world on twitch in just in life you know so like i 
want this podcast to be a place where every week I can come on here, sit down in front of a camera, and talk openly, honestly, freely, and truthfully about whatever I want to talk about. You know? And that's and and again, I want your guys' input. I want to know what what are your guys' interests? What parts of the podcast do you really like? What parts do you maybe not like as much? Did, you know, do you like when I'm talking about the serious stuff like me going in depth on on me relapsing and how I got to that point and addiction and mental health? Do you, do you guys like the more like, you know, like uh pop culture like news stuff, like me talking about the TwitchCon stuff and Adriana Chechik? Like, you know, let me know. I I want to know what parts of this that you guys enjoy so I know how to adjust going forward, you know? Because because this is a two-way street. This is you know, not in solely just me. Cuz if it was solely just me, oh man, some of the stuff I would probably talk about on here wouldn't even wouldn't even <laughs> make it to air. But Honestly, I'm trying to think that that might be it. And I hate to do a super short episode, but you know what? I, I can I can talk a little bit more about about me relapsing it and, and what that means for me going forward, because I don't want to gloss over that. You know, I feel like maybe I did a little bit, but here's what I'll say. People have an idea that that relapse is a very black and white thing that that once you relapse that you have now it's like you're either on the wagon or off the wagon right and for me for this addict um it doesn't have to be that i i don't want to brush past this relapse with with like I don't want to brush past it as if it wasn't a big deal or as if it didn't happen. But on the flip side of that, I don't want to give it so much power that that I let it like consume me. And that's why I got on here and I fucking decided to tell you guys, to be honest, like I don't have to talk about any of this. It's it's hard to open up about this shit. It's hard to open up and talk so vulnerably about my mental health and my addiction. And, and all of that stuff. And, and I do it because I just want to be truthful and, and honest and, and keep it 100. I mean, that's all I've ever done on my Twitch, in my, in my real life, like regular life, and, and on here is just to keep it real. Because I feel like more and more we're, we're just inundated and surrounded by all of this fake just garbage that doesn't even mean anything that like finding real shit is becoming harder and harder and that's what I gravitate towards that's what I'm trying to put out there into the universe and that's what I gravitate towards is real people real struggles real things and that's the kind of stuff I want to touch touch on in this podcast like I think next week or the following, we're going to try to get a, a guest on because I really would like to have somebody to bounce off of. I don't think that I'm going to be able to keep up doing hour and a half or two hour episodes uh, just by myself. To be totally honest, I'll be lucky if this one hits the 45 minute mark. Because as y'all can see, it is hard to, to talk for an hour straight and just keep going and not stop. Like, I uh, definitely was ill-prepared. I only had a couple things I wanted to talk about, and I thought I'd be able to share about them for much longer, and I wasn't. So you know what? Rather than babble on, I'm going to end it here. I think I got everything out that I wanted to get out, and you know what? I'll try to come into next week more prepared and take some time to to prepare a full idea of what I want the episode to be and hopefully like an hour because like said I relapsed two nights ago these are when I was using drugs I could have been working on this podcast or or working towards bettering myself and I just hit this dark awful point where it seemed like 
the only thing that was going to help was that. And then, of course, you do it. And then you realize after the fact that it, it didn't help anyway, you know? That's the real insanity of drug addiction is in your head you think, oh, I'm so, whatever malady it is you're going through, I'm so hurt, I'm so broken right now that these drugs will fix it. And it's like putting a Band-Aid on a broken arm, you know, because it doesn't even help anyway. And that's the, the real insanity of it. But to end off, what I want to say is if you're a person out there who's also struggling you can fucking do this. I know anyone can. Because if I can, I know anyone can. I went from being the worst fucking junkie you could ever think of to, to where I'm at now. So I know that if I can dig myself out of that hole, that anyone can. Am I, am I recovered? And by no means. I still have tons of work to do. But I'm in a better place today than I was yesterday. And I think that's all any of us can fucking hope for or ask for, you know. But uh, I love you guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, make sure to, uh, you know, look in the description. Check out all the other socials. I stream on Twitch five days a week, most weeks. Uh, I'm on every social media posting stuff. Um, what else? Uh, my birthday's in a couple of days. Maybe we'll do a little video, like. If I go out and do anything cool, my birthday, little vlog type deal. Um, yeah. And you guys know where to find me. I'll be streaming. I'll be doing my thing. And I appreciate you guys listening and being here. I know, trust me, I know that this episode was a jumbled mess, that it wasn't super coherent, that I covered a bunch of different shit. But I'm going to be totally honest. I was very, 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 very nervous about even talking about the fact that I relapsed and I wanted to get it out there. And just just get get it out there and so I can move past it. So I thank you guys for letting me do that and I hope you guys understand and I promise that next week I will be back and better than ever and more coherent and all of that shit. But yeah, that's all I got. Have a good one, everybody. I'll see you guys on the next one.